Hello and welcome to Bread of Life, a daily devotional program which each week features a different area pastor. Our speaker for this week is Pastor Scott McDonald of Meriden. I asked the question yesterday, if someone were to ask you how you became a Christian, how would you answer? Would you say, I have been saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, as revealed by the authority of Scripture alone, for God's glory alone? As I shared, these were phrases originally in Latin, stemming from the 16th century Reformation of the Church, and these are great truths of our faith that still speak today. Let us begin, then, today, with the first on the list. We begin with the traditional term sola gratia, or grace, alone. It all begins here with what we call grace, but what do we mean by it? Certainly it is a great truth of our faith. We sing of how it is so amazing, and yet we might perhaps find it difficult to define. Well, grace in the scripture is the favor of God on account of Jesus Christ. It is all he is and all he has done for us. Grace is that freely given gift of God's forgiveness. Listen to Paul writing to the Ephesians, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing, it is the gift of God. It is not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Now what is Paul saying here but that grace is a gift, the unearned gift of God's kindness toward us in Jesus Christ? Again, all he is and all he has done. It is God's loving kindness in his forgiveness. And you know what's more? It's free. And let me add, it is not just a free three-week trial either, you know, where if you're dissatisfied, you can return the unused portion for a complete refund. No, this thing actually saves, and it keeps, and it lasts. God's grace even preserves our faith. Yes, it's free. And it is God's gift. But let me add that it was not free for him. Christ purchased this forgiveness for us, and it cost him his life. God's grace, made available to you this day, cost our Savior his life. Then through death and into resurrection, all given for you. And so it is true, it is the gift of God's grace by which gift alone we are saved. I mentioned this before, but it seems to me that in part these truths of faith, including this great truth of saving grace alone, is sometimes lost on people in our day. For example, I've heard it said, well, God understands me, I do my best, and he knows, and I'm a pretty good person anyway, it'll all turn out all right in the end, he'll understand, and he'll let me in. But will the Lord really settle for our best efforts at moral improvement? We are such can-do people in our day, aren't we? Infomercials tell us that we can have personal transformation with a little effort and the right program tailored to our needs. We get the sense that we're on our own in bettering ourselves, and so we tend to translate this into spiritual matters. But I ask Is this enough to become a child of God? Your best efforts? Will it work? What about our deepest problem, that of the power of indwelling sin? The very reason Jesus came to this world. I mean, we have sin, and sin has us to some extent. People surely need more than some kind of self-improvement. God can't have the job half done. So, Jesus came to do it all on your behalf. We all, Scripture says, were at one time dead in sin, that is, spiritually lifeless. And so, we mistakenly figure we can lend a hand or something, but how can we when so spiritually deadened? And compared with the renovation God has in mind, your efforts to improve your own life alone are as trivial as Well, sweeping a warehouse slated for the wrecking ball. No, 
God alone can solve this problem. And so we all need a Savior. And it is all by His grace alone. He is a gracious Savior for great sinners. And it is a gift. No effort, no payment required, no easy monthly installments. And let me add, of course, it is not given without repentance. For one to receive with open heart what God is offering, one needs to have an open heart in the first place. Repentance is a daily change of mind, attitude, and will in giving Jesus our sin as we turn again and again to him. God grant it for his glory and for our good, for we are made his Christian people by his grace alone. Join me then tomorrow as we continue to explore together these great truths of our faith. You've been listening to Pastor Scott McDonald of Meriden, and this has been Bread of Life, a program to encourage you from God's Word.